detach, group, slice, contour, flatten, weld. What does it all mean? And when do we use it? We'll just keep watching and I'm gonna explain it all right now. What's up, Foxy people? Welcome back to my channel. Today's video is a Cricut tutorial. This is kind of part three. It's a part two of my design space walkthrough. Um, I did say that I was going to leave attach, weld, group, slice, contour, flatten all for this other video because I find a lot of people get very confused on these and when to use them and I didn't want to just quickly brush over them. So this video is dedicated just to those and it's going to be more detailed. It's going to be more detailed exactly as to when to use it because I see a lot of people online um, recommending to use weld when you don't need it and recommending to use slice when you can just use attach and all that stuff so let's get into it and i'll show you exactly what i'm talking about so i'm just going to use basic shapes in this tutorial just so that it doesn't get too confusing for everybody these five features are very confusing as it is so i don't want to make it any harder if possible so i'm just going to start with a square and a triangle and change them colors just so that you can see how we're distinguishing them. So if we do nothing to them and we go to make it, they're going to cut on different mats because they're different colors. So they're gonna cut separately on different mats that matches the color of the mat. So we can highlight them both and click group. Now this will keep them together while you are designing. So while you're designing on the mat, if you need to move multiple things, you can do that. But then when you go to make it, they're still gonna cut on different mats because they're different colors and they haven't been completely attached together. So if you want to keep everything in the same place that you designed it, you have to attach it. Now it will change all to one color because you're telling the machine that you want it to cut exactly where you placed it and you want it to cut basically all together. So it has to be the same color. Now slice kind of gets confused sometimes with attach. You can use attach in the same sense as slice. So say I want to slice this triangle out of the square for whatever design I'm making. I don't know why that would look good, but let's just say. I can select both and attach it And then when it cuts, you can see it's gonna cut the triangle out of that square. So that's okay if you're doing something simple like that. So if you wanna slice it, same thing. You would attach both and just slice. And now you can remove, you can see the different layers over there. You can remove all the pieces. So this way, I guess it's better if you, when you're designing so that you can see how it looks would be the only reason that you would do slicing like that rather than attach. Now you have to be careful because group, attach, weld, everything like that, you can do multiple things. With slice, you can only do two layers at a time. So let's just say I want to cut out the triangle and a couple stars from this square. Again, I don't know why anybody would do this. I'm just trying to use a simple design. So 
if I go up and I try and select them all, you can see I can't slice them because you can only do the two layers at a time. So you have to do this one at a time. So I'm going to select the square and the triangle and slice it. And then I will remove the pieces that I don't need. I'm just going to send it to the back so that I can see the stars. And then same process. I'm going to select the square and one of the stars and slice it. And again, remove the pieces I don't need. this one square that has all those pieces cut out of it. Again, you could do the same thing with attach. It's kind of, they're both kind of the same thing, really. So well, this is the one that gets everybody confused. I've seen people online try and offer advice of welding certain things and you don't need to or they forget to or whatever. This is the, definitely the most complicated one. So welding is basically cement gluing them together, right? That's what welding means. When you weld met metal, you're cementing them together. Same thing here. So if I were to just attach this and then go and cut it, you can see, you can still see the line. It will, The machine will cut that line, so it's going to cut the two shapes out. Now say I wanted this house to be one solid shape. That is where weld comes in. So I'm going to select it all, click weld. and you can see that line is gone. And when you go to make it, same thing, the line is gone, so it's just gonna cut the outline of it. Weld comes in very, very, very handy with cursive writing, which I'm gonna show you in just a second. Now, be careful, weld, you cannot unweld. Like group, you can ungroup, you can detach, you can unflatten, weld, you cannot unweld. You can undo until you get back to that point, but that's the best you can do. And if you save the project and get out of it and come back, there's nothing you can do. It is set as permanent. You will have to redo it if you want to change anything. So here I'm just going to show you what I mean about weld being more effective with cursive writing and why everybody suggests to weld cursive writing. or any writing you want stuck together. Usually like normal writing, you don't have them touching each other. Cursive writing you do. But see here how you can see every letter is separated. What you're gonna wanna do is ungroup them, move them a little bit closer to each other so that you don't have that gap and it looks like one solid movement. We're gonna go in and select it all and I'm just gonna show you if I were to attach it it looks like it's all stuck together. I'm gonna to change the color just so that it makes more sense. When it's black, you can't really see the cut lines. So see with it being attached, it's still gonna cut out every letter separately. You can see those cut lines. So we're gonna go back and we're going to weld it. And now when you make it, those cut lines are gone. It's all one seamless movement and the, the word's gonna be one, one solid image, basically. So one common mistake that um, happens, or not mistake, issue that happens with Weld is that some of the letters will fill in, especially with scripted fonts. See how that E is filled in? So there's actually two ways of fixing this. The first way 
it's doing it because the lines are overlapped. So the first way is just moving everything over, making sure that there's no lines overlapping. So see, now that E is not filled in because the lines are not overlapping. And then the second way, I'm just going to undo all the way back to where it was welded in. Okay, so the second way to fix it, even if your line is overlapped a little bit, what you do is make it very, very big and weld it. And then as you can see, that E is not filled in now. And then you just bring it back to, down to size. And sometimes it, you have to make it even bigger than you thought. So just keep trying, keep trying. But eventually, even with the lines being overlapped, if you make it big enough, it will, it will work. Now contour is another one that's kind of confusing and iffy with people. You don't use it that often at all. You cannot use it on fonts. It's only for images. Basically if there's um, like a little, a little something on the image that you don't want there. You can't really go in and erase it like you can on like paint or something like that. So that's where contour comes from. Yes, I said paint, that's how old I am. Let's not judge. So we're gonna go into this contour menu and you just click on what you want contoured out or what you want contoured in. You gotta play around with it and get used to it. You can either physically click on the pieces or on that side right menu, You can they have the pieces separated and you can just click on those ones. So that wasn't the best example to show you, so let me show you a couple more. So um, fonts with outlines. This is another one that everybody asks how to do it, and there's really no specific way how to do it. I do have a video on fonts, and I touch on this a little more in detail, but this is just a quick quick example of how to do it. Like I said, you can't do it on fonts, so this was actually uploaded as an image. And I forgot to take out the inside of that circle, so I'm just gonna go in and click on it, and it's erased. And it looks like it's gonna overlap. Good. I'm gonna change the color, color so that we see what we're doing. I'm gonna send that to the back. So there you go. The one layer, it looks like the outline, while the other one is the back of it. Because this font had like three different layers, I'm trying it a different way as well, so that maybe it's not so thick. Like the way I just did it, you, you would basically layer it one on top of the other. This one is like the outline and the inside. You can really do it either way. Now I'm going to show you one more example of contouring. Just to get the point across, basically. So we have this image of Winnie the Pooh. Let's say we want to get rid of those lines on his shirt and legs. So we're just going to go in and click on them. And they erase or they hide. You know what? Let's take his eyes and eyebrows out too. Maybe we want to just put them on our, ourselves or whatever. And there you go. They're gone. We can also change, maybe we want the shirt to be cut out solidly with the outline. We can do that too. By just clicking on it here, and it filled it in. 
So really, you just have to play with contour. There's no easy way to explain it because every image is going to be different and you need to use contour on each image a different way. So again, play with it and get comfortable with it, but it's really not a very popular feature. And lastly, we have flatten. So this is, you need to use this with printing. Um, you have to flatten the images down to the page to be able to print them, like to be able to change them from like a cut image to a printing image. So we just upload a picture as a print and cut, not as a cut image. So this is a print and cut, but our font is stuck at um, like a cut image right now, right? So we're just going to go up and highlight them both and flatten it. So now it not only attached everything together, but it set it all to a printable image. So now it's telling me to send it to my printer. It's going to print that whole thing, the whole picture, and then that square that's around it, that's what it's going to cut out. Now you can also have some cut and some set to print then cut. I don't know why you would do that, but depending on the design you want, right? So the image is still stuck at print then cut, so it's going to print it and then cut out the square. And then you can cut out the words in vinyl. So hopefully that made a little more sense and you feel a little more confident as to when to use these certain features. Let me know if you have any questions down below and I will explain it a little more in detail if needed. Also let me know what else you would like to see when it comes to Cricut tutorials. But don't forget I don't just do Cricut tutorials. I do mommy hacks and lifestyle videos and Disney planning and all that fun stuff. So make sure you are subscribed so that you know when those videos come out and turn on that bell notification because apparently sometimes YouTube is not recommending the videos or letting subscribers know that these new videos are coming out. So make sure you turn on the bell notification as well so that you're the first one to know when that video comes out. Make sure you give this video a big thumbs up. It really does help my channel and it is a free way that you can support me. So do all the things and I will see you in the next one. Bye guys. <laughs> some cute hair and then the outro um, um. damn it I always mess that up um. you're a friend and a confidant I've had that song stuck in my head all night um make sure you give this video a big thumbs up really rude make sure you give this video a big <laughs> Good job, buddy. Let's try that for a third time.